Hi there, my name is Fawaz Shafi Mahmood. I hail from Kasagod, a small district in Kerala. If I talk about my qualification and interest, I have been interested in studies from the very beginning of my childhood. And I have been talking, topping my classes and uh, I have been securing good marks, especially in mathematics. Uh, during 12th uh, board exam also, I, secured, I was the school topper in mathematics. And uh, uh, beat, during BTEC also, engineering mathematics subjects, I had been uh, securing good marks, especially in engineering mathematics 1, in which I secured 99% of the mark and was the department topper. After engineering, I uh, took up uh, coaching classes and uh, secured an All India rank of 280 uh, in gate uh, mechanical. And that was uh, just with uh, two and a half uh, to three months of preparation. With this, I understood that if I uh, get a good platform and a good environment, I am able to study even difficult subjects and I am able to excel in that. Now, it was during the BTEC uh, uh, presentation uh, seminar presentation that I understood that I was not only passionate about studies but uh, but was also, also passionate about teaching because uh, I was able, able to captivate the audience uh, with my presentation and also judges were full of praises and uh, uh, they, they awarded me 90 percentage marks for, for the seminar MTEC seminar was also, was also similar and during MTEC I was uh, given the responsibility of teaching assistant then and there I had decided that I wanted to become a teaching faculty and I have been teaching uh, at uh, PA College of Engineering for the past three and a half years. Also I have been teaching uh, 11th uh, and 12th standard students physics um, uh, during weekends and uh, uh, for, for the past uh, six or so months. Now with this teaching experience I have understood a lot of things about teaching. Uh, due to lack of time I will not be going into detail about those things. Now I will start off with the subject. Uh, the subject uh, I am uh, going to handle today is, I uh, will talk to the students, hi students. Uh, the subjects, uh, subject I am uh, about to handle today is physics and uh, you know that physics has been uh, divided into many branches. Out of them, one branch is mechanics. Now, the topic I will be handling today is kinematics. Now, so mechanics is divided into kinematics, then you have statics and you have kinetics now the time is very short i will be you know concentrating on kinematics what is kinematics kinematics is a study of motion without considering the forces which are responsible for that motion or which are responsible for the alteration of motion so we we know that forces are responsible for uh, motion or bringing a moving object to rest that is force is responsible for that but we are not learning about the forces here, we are just considering the motion. Motion means its displacement, its uh, you know, distance, velocity, acceleration, all those things will be dealt with here. Let's see. Now we have told that we will be learning about motion. What is motion? Motion is actually change of position. For example, I am at this position now. After some time I have moved and reached some other position. So what has happened? I have moved or motion, uh, you know, I have uh, um, conducted motion. So uh, that, that's, that's what motion is. Now if I stand over here, you would say that I am at rest. Even after some time I am still here, so I am at rest. But uh, motion is a relative term. Uh, I am not at rest because I am, rest, I am at rest with respect to the ground. But the ground is not at rest. Because earth itself is revolving around sun and it's also rotating about, it, about its axis and we are on this earth so we are not actually at rest but it is uh, for our purpose we can consider ground as a, an inertial frame and we'll be talking about our motion with respect to the ground what is inertial frame and what is non-inertial frame we'll, we'll be learning in the coming chapters now when we talk about motion we can say uh, we can talk about two things two parameters over there one is displacement and one, the other one is distance for example, we have taken a frame of reference with this as x-axis and this as y-axis. If we know that the point, an object is at point A in the initial, uh, that's the initial position of the point. Now, after a certain time, it has reached a point B. Now, when it moves, it will be moving along a certain path, right? So, what happens is this path 
has been covered to reach B. So one thing we can tell about is the distance it has covered to reach B. What is the distance it has covered to reach B? The path length. If you straighten this path, the length of that line will be the distance. And it's obvious that it is a scalar quantity because you cannot you can you cannot say a direction for this because direction is continuously changing. Now there is another term we can associate with this notion that is called displacement. From A, it has been displaced to B. We are not considering or we are not uh, you know uh, considering the path it has taken. We just want its initial position and the final position. So this is the displacement of the object. That is how much it has displaced. Now this is obviously a vector because it is pointing from the initial point to the final point, right? Now you have already learned that what is a vector? Vector is something which has magnitude and direction and also which obeys vector law of addition. Now here you can see if point A, we are denoting it uh, with a position vector Ra. This is the position vector of uh, A and if we are denoting B, uh, with a position vector rb this is the ve position vector of b now we need this value this is the displacement how do you find the displacement we know that by vector addition vector law of addition ra plus r will give you rb or you can say r is equal to rb minus r right now these this is a vector it will have x component as well as y component. So if you are taking the x component alone, you can say x is equal to xb minus xa. And if you are taking the y component, you can say y is equal to yb minus ya. These are the components. So this is how you find the displacement of a body. So I is this? Okay. See, I'm going a little fast because the time given to me is a very short one. If you have any any sort of doubts, please uh, feel free to ask me. Now, let's take an example. Suppose a an object has moved from this point A to B. Say this is 3 meter. It has moved 3 meter along this path. Then it has moved 4 meter along this path. And this angle given is 45 degree. Okay. Now after this it has moved some say 2 meter along this path and say this angle given us say 30 degree right now say this is b this is c this is d they are asking you what is the displacement and the distance how do you find the distance it's very easy distance is the total path length it has covered what is the path length it has covered 3 meter here 4 meter here and 2 meter here so to total dis distance it has covered is 3 plus 4 plus 2 very easy 9 meters but how do you find the displacement students displacement is the vector sum displacement is vector so it will be the vector sum so displacement say r cap is given by vector sum so we will have to take the vector sum of ab plus bc plus cd then you will get the displacement now what is ab shall i raise the upper upper portion See, we have been uh, given a very small uh, board, so I'm not able to write everything in a single board. So what I'll do is AB is equal to. Now this is having only X component. This is a, a, a motion along X direction. There is no motion along Y direction. So this is 3i cap. Now what is BC? This is, you know, you see, its X component will be 4 cos 45 because this is 45 degree the component is given by this so it's y component sorry it's y component will be given by 4 sin 45 right so this will be 4 what is cos 45 1 by root 2 so it will be 4 by root 2 i cap plus 4 by root 2 j cap sorry for the time uh, space constraint now this is cd what is cd can you tell me you see the component will be along this direction and this direction now this is the positive x direction what will be the value 2 cos 30 very good now what will be the component along this uh, y direction it is 2 sin 4 sin 30 but it's minus because it in the it is in the negative direction 
so the uh, if you write it in vector form it will be 2 cos 30 what is cos 30 it is root 3 by 2 so 2 root 3 by 2 will give you this root 3 i cap right plus j cap this is minus 2 sin 30 sin 30 is 1 by 2 so it will be 1 by 2 that will give you just j cap so these are the three vectors so if you add up all these three vectors shall i raise this figure okay i'll be erasing this now if i add up all the vectors i'll give i'll get displacement is equal to 3 plus 4 by root 2 plus root 3 i cap and what are the j j components we get 4 by root 2 minus 1 j cap this is the vector form if you want to find the magnitude of that you should uh, take the square root of x component say sx square plus sy square so if you square and uh, add up this thing you will get this magnitude of displacement so this is how you find the displacement and the distance and the direction also you can easily find because uh, you know that uh, tan theta the angle will be y component divided by x component so this will give you the angle okay see the time is very short i have been able to solve only one question i have a lot of things in uh, stock with me uh, it will be you know dealt with in the coming videos anyway thank you for uh, watching this video uh, if you have liked this video please uh, uh, consider this for my selection thank you